All right. So, well, hmm. Uh, to pick the energy up a little bit, I've had a lot of challenges come in for Ben to tell some sort of horse joke. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to explain the horse joke? Sure. So there's this joke uh, that it's great. It's with the animal mark, mark, please. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> well, also make sure you're unmuted. Should be unmuted. If it's green, you're unmuted. If it's orange, you're muted. Oh, we're nice and green. Uh, so there's this joke Screw. that involves a horse, and it's great. It's funny, uh, it definitely goes to a conclusion that's satisfying, it has ups and downs. Uh, it's truly a story of a, of a joke. Okay. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> no. mm -hmm. The three parts that any story or joke yeah. might need. Yeah. Do you guys want to hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. How long do I have? Uh, about a hundred. Uh, about uh, forty-nine hours. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay, Jacob. What do we want to call the driver? Uh, I mean, how how you feel about horse? I love horse. Excellent. I it's, thought you might. Yeah, horse is actually the premier character in this story. The first one that you'll hear about. So there's a horse, and the horse is watching TV. Horse has kind of had a tough time, let's put it this way, finding themselves in a spot of isolation or just not really enjoying the things that horse has usually enjoyed. Uh, horse finds themselves just watching a lot of television, your usual stuff, dramas, comedies, documentaries, and most recently, discovered what MTV is, music television, where they play a lot of music videos. And so Horse stumbles upon MTV, music television, and finds a music video playing. It's a track by Van Halen called, I don't know a lot of Van Halen songs, so probably jump. It's a good one. <laughs> I'm not familiar with, I don't know a lot of Van Halen songs, but... It, I think it got shortened to Jump. Yeah, yeah. And so, Horace is watching this and is just captivated. It's got everything that all the previous genres of television Horace has watched loved. It's got comedy in that they're making wacky faces. It's got drama in that there's tension between a variety of instruments playing. And it's got action. And the action that Horace is captivated by is the guitarist slamming away at the guitar. And Horse says, I, that's it. This is what I want. This is that energy I need to get me back into my groove. I should do, I should learn how to do that. I should learn how to play guitar. Uh, but, I, you know what? No, no, no. I'm going to do it. So Horse gets up, goes over to the phone. Well, first goes to the phone, then realizes a oh, silly horse. I don't know the, I don't know a phone number for a guitar teacher. And then goes over to a phone book, and then op opens up the phone book and finds a guitar teacher and calls and says, "Hi there, my name's Horse, and I'm looking to learn how to play guitar. Would you be able to teach me?" And the teacher goes, "Of course, we'll learn. We'll teach you how to play guitar. It's really easy. In fact, we have a variety of packages for teaching you how to play guitar." We can set you up with one where you already have all your equipment. You come by, we do some lessons, it'll be great. But then we have something like our premier package where you show up, we give you the equipment. It's long term, baby. We're going to make you a pro. And Horse says, you know what? That second option, that's exactly what I need in my life. <laughs> and so Horse says, I will sign up for the premier package. But there's one issue. The person on the other end goes, what, what's the issue? He goes, well, I'm a horse. He goes, oh, that's fine. Horses, that's no big deal. We have special guitars for horses. It'll all work out. Horse goes, great. This is excellent. They schedule an appointment. They meet up. Horse starts taking lessons. And shockingly, horse is quite good at this. Horse is a bit of a guitar natural. Starts getting better and getting better and wanting to learn harder songs. And it gets to a point where Horse is so confident in its ability that on a nice day, when all the neighbors are outside, you know, washing their cars, mowing lawns, 
horse thinks, I could play guitar in front of these people. And he goes out, he's about to play guitar in front of everybody and goes, I feel weird doing this alone. So horse goes inside, calls up his friend Cow and says, Cow, you got to come over. I need someone. It, look, I'll explain it when you get here. And Cow goes, okay, of course. Now, Cow's a great friend, which is why Cow needs no explanation as to why Horse needs Cow to come over. Right. So Cow rushes over, bursts through the door, and says, Horse, what's going on? And, and Horse goes, slow down. It's not that big of a deal, but come look at this. And they go into the living room. And Horse just starts shredding for Cow. And Cow's flabbergasted, absolutely floored, like, oh my god, what are you doing? This is fantastic. And Horace says, I'm playing guitar. I've learned to play guitar. And Cow goes, well, Horace, I, I mean, you were in a rut for so long. How did this happen? Like, what caused this rise in energy and enthusiasm? And Horace says, okay, well, I'll show you. And turns on MTV, and there's a commercial playing, so they wait a bit. It's nothing that <laughs> good. It's like for pizza pops or pizza rolls or maybe a pizza roll made by a pizza pop company. But either way, before either of them can figure it out, it's back to a music video on MTV, right. music television. Mm. And it's another Van Halen song. I don't know any... Oh, Panama. I know another Van Halen song. So the song's called... It's another Van Halen song, Panama. I know another Van Halen song, parentheses, Panama, right. better known as Panama. So they're watching uh, Van Halen's song Panama on MTV music television. And Horace points and says, that's what got me going. And Cal goes, okay, that's pretty cool, but what is that person doing? And Cal's pointing to not necessarily the person on the television playing the drums, because this is pre-recorded content. Right. Instead, they're pointing at the television, <laughs> implying that they're talking about the person playing the drums. <laughs> and Horse goes, well, it's their, I, they're playing drums. And Cow goes, I want to do that. I want to learn how to do that. And Horse goes, this is perfect, Cow. I never even told you the original reason why I wanted you here, other than the explanation of how I learned how to play guitar me playing guitar, but that's more just connected to me wanting you to come here so that we could perform together. And Cal goes, great, that's fine. Uh, how do I learn how to play drums? And so they walk over to the kitchen and go to the phone, and of course they don't know the name of like a drum instructor, so then they go to the phone book to find one, and then they call a drum instructor. And they say, hey, I'm learning, I want to learn how to play drums. And the instructor goes, this is perfect. We have multiple packages for teaching you how to play drums. We have, uh, you just show up, you bring your own kit, and we, we practice, we get you going, it's great, it's fun. And then we have our premier package, where we give you a drum kit. We get you going pro. We right. get you being the best drummer in the city. And Kyle goes, sorry, could you repeat that? The phone cut out. <laughs> And so the instructor says, okay, sorry, do you need me to start from the very beginning? And Cow <laughs> says, no, I heard the first part about like the, the, the uh, like baseline package, but I want, uh, you, I heard premier. They said, no, premier. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, my apologies. And so they go over it again. It's a premier package where Cow gets the drum kit all together, all at once, basically. And they make Cow the best darn drummer in this city. Okay. And so the instructor goes, this is, all right, awesome. You like this, I like this, let's do it. And Cow says, there's one issue. I'm a cow. And the instructor says, that's not an issue. And Cow smiles. And the instructor can't tell Cow smiling because there's a phone and there's no <laughs> visual <laughs> connection. Right. But you can kind of hear it in their voice. Yeah. yeah, and that's nice and they have a nice moment. And so they organize it. Cow learns how to play drums. And here's the thing. Cow's good. Cow's not just good. Cow's pretty good. Right. And so Cow <laughs> learns to play drums. And Horse knows how to play guitar. And so they decide that instead of independently practicing their instruments by themselves, that if they worked together, they could create 
a type of music with both a guitar and a, a drum, well, drum set. And so they start playing together and practicing. And they think, hey, we're getting pretty good. And Horse goes, you know, Cow, it's funny. I almost forgot the original reason in which I called you to get you to come over because it certainly wasn't to watch MTV, music television, and to watch <laughs> Panama, in parentheses. Um, it was, in fact, to get you to see if you knew how to play an instrument or if you were interested in learning how to play an instrument so that we could perform together in public. And Cow says, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. So on a nice Saturday morning, people are outside washing cars, mowing lawns, playing with animals. Not animals that are humanoid, such as the cow or the horse featured in this story, right. and soon to be the chicken, which will be the next character introduced. Right. But instead, non-humanoid animals, um, which there are plentiful. And there are also extra humanoid animals, as we will see later in the story, but they come later in the story. <laughs> and so they go outside and they perform together. And uh, the next door neighbor, Chicken, not the, ch not the non-humanoid chicken that lives next door, although coincidentally, one of the humanoid owners owns um, a smaller chicken. <laughs> the other, the neighbor chicken, it's a humanoid chicken next door, hears them playing and says, wow, this is amazing. What are you guys doing? You're so loud and cool. <laughs> and they say, we can show you, but better yet, why don't we show you? And so they all go inside uh, into the living room where the television is on and they're sitting down and they change the channel to music television MTV <laughs> and they wait for uh, a music video to come on but they don't have to wait because it's actually playing but they don't know who the band is because it's an animated music video and although the style of music's recognizable because it's um, it's actually just Panama again <laughs> but it's a different version of it and they say this is what we are doing and Chicken said, well, I knew what you were doing. Sorry for the clever ruse, but I just wanted to hang out with you and seem like I was more engaged. I'm actually quite lonely myself. And they say, that's no worries. Like, we've all been there before. You know what we are doing? They say, yes, we know that you are playing musical instruments to make music. And that, and that I also play a musical instrument to produce music. I play keyboards. And they go, great. Do you want to finish watching this music video before we talk about this further? And they say, yeah. So they finish the music video, and then they talk about it further. And Chicken says, I used to play keyboard. I should have specified, but I didn't want to ruin the fact that we were watching a music video on MTV, music television, uh, and that it would break the mood of the song and whatnot. But I know how to play the keyboards, the electronic keyboards, but it's been quite some time so I would need lessons. And they say, great, well, let's go call someone up. And they walk over to the phone, and they're about to call them, but then they realize that phone line has actually been acting up. So they walk to a different room for a different phone, and that one's also acting up because it's kind of on the same network. But they have a cell phone, so they pull out the cell phone. It's Cow's cell phone. Um, and they call up, a, they Googled um, a, a teacher, if you will, Right. Um, and they Googled it earlier so that this would be, and by earlier I mean when one of them was fumbling with the phone, mm -hmm. so that they knew that you know they had time to do this. It lines up really well in the narrative, but not while I'm narrating it. <laughs> and so they call the teacher and they say, hey, I want to learn how to play keyboard. Well, I should specify, I know how to play keyboard, but I should learn, I, I want to refresh my memory. <laughs> and then the, the person on the end says, this is great. I have a whole spiel about how there's the, you know, er, like the lower end package where it's still fantastic, but we just kind of refresh you on how to play and uh, you have to supply your own keyboard and all that jazz. And then I had a second package, which is our premier package, that if you did not already know how to play keyboard, it would have included um, us supplying equipment and we would make you the best in the city. You would be fantastic. And then Chicken says, sorry, can you repeat that? You cut out. <laughs> and then he goes, yo, you know what? You know what? I don't need, I, it's weird. I want to hear the second part for completionist reasoning, but I only need the first part, so I'll go with the first part. 
And the person on the other end says, sorry, can you, can you repeat that? You cut out. And Chicken says, oh, are you making a And then they realize they're both making a joke. And so, but they they coordinate it. They end up um, being, right. you know, they get, they get a refresher going. And this is nice because it takes less time than learning an instrument from scratch. It's kind of like riding a bike, bicycle. And so they get all good at playing their instruments again. And so they play together and they practice together as a unit, a band, if you will. And they get better and they think, hey, we're pretty good. We could, uh, what, about, what about performing for an audience, you know? We could probably fill up a whole nightclub of um, people and animals, the humanoid animals, not the smaller animals that have been previously referenced in this story, but the humanoid animals, not unlike the ones who are the performers. And they say, great, let's try this out. There's a battle of the band contests um, for the best battle of the band contest. And we, <laughs> they're taking applications for that contest, so we should play in that. And so they all perform in this battle of the band contest for being the best band uh, for a battle of the band contest. And they win the contest. And they get big. And then from the back of the, the um, auditorium in which they performed, a rat comes up. But it's a, real, it's a real rat. It's like a tiny rat. And so that kind of scares them. But then a larger rat comes out. And this is the humanoid rat, not unlike our main characters here. And this rat is a uh, record executive and says, I like your sounds. I'd like to uh, work with you to make you better. And they say, well, we already know how to play our instruments. And the rat goes, oh, sorry, maybe you didn't understand. I want to work with you and try to create an album for you because your music is great and you're all good together. And so they all kind of huddle around to decide whether or not they want to do this. And they all agree that, hey, we should probably do this. This sounds really cool and good. And so they start playing together, they record this album, and they end up getting pretty popular, you know? Right. As far as three-piece animal bands go, it's still kind of weird. I haven't really fleshed out the difference between the humanoid animals and the tinier animals and the relationships, but that's not necessary for this story. Um, and, but they get pretty big as far as humanoid animal stories go. And, uh, hey, how's it going? And um, so... They, uh, they get pretty good, they get big, but here's the thing, right? Horse is, horse is the guitarist, and if you've seen any uh, rock band, the right. guitarist usually stands up at the front. Yeah, it'd be, uh, yeah exactly, it'd be kind of weird if they didn't, if they, especially if they weren't on stage, that would be the weirdest. And so, instead, uh, horse gets a lot more attention than the unit as a whole, a band. And uh, because of it, horse, you know, coming from a spot of being more vulnerable and now all of a sudden being risen up to these ranks is feeling pretty, uh, pretty jazzed about himself. And it kind of goes to his head. And he thinks, hey, maybe I'll put out a solo album, a solo <laughs> horse album. And so he does. But then there's some complications because I'm pretty sure there's a band called Horse or a band of horses. And this, he's a singular horse. And there's some, it's tricky, there's a, a you, but you'll hear about it later, I'm sure. And then, so, Horse uh, goes solo, puts out a solo project, I should say, <laughs> but then goes solo because the project's really successful and more successful from their band. I don't remember what their band's name is called, it's not relevant. And so, Horse ends up getting really, you know, full of himself and thinks, I should just do this. Chicken, cow, who? Horse says knowing who they are, but to imply that they're not needed for this adventure or for the rest of Horse's life seemingly off the success of this upcoming adventure. So Horse says, I'm done. This band's over. And so they, Horse, Horse leaves the band. Horse leaves the province. See, they're all Canadian, too. Um, and so Horse flies all the way to Toronto, Ontario, uh, to start the solo career, leaving cow and chicken alone in Victoria, B.C., British Columbia. And uh, it's everything's going pretty all right for the first album. Right. And But it's not for the fall. <laughs> the, the next albums after the first one are not good. But you know what? By some standards, having a pretty good group project and then two solo projects doing well, that's pretty good. I wouldn't feel bad if I were a horse. But 
And Horse doesn't feel bad. Horse feels really good. Horse starts to feel bad when the third album uh, sucks. It's not good. It's, uh, it's, it's real bad, and Horse knows it's real bad. Horse didn't work on album. Horse spent most time not doing music things or progressing uh, his artistic endeavors. Horse uh, was, uh, pardon the joke, uh, horsing around. Uh, kind of, and, and sorry, I didn't mean to put another joke in this joke. I can start over. If <laughs> no, you want. no, no. <laughs> so, so horse, uh, this album is not good, uh, and horse does not take this well. And so horse's idea is that, oh my god, this maybe maybe I was wrong. Maybe I should. Okay, but you know I'll do another album. And so horse does a, a fourth solo album, fifth total if we include the the album done with the band that I didn't name. And um, on the fifth album, it also is not good. It's really bad. And the fifth album is so bad, Horse says, I, I'm not making music anymore. And makes, goes on to a, um, Horse goes on to a radio show and says, I'm not making music anymore. And Cow and Chicken hear this. But they're in BC, British Columbia. And they hear this on the radio. Um, not in music, well, technically it, they talk about music, but they're talking, not playing music. But they do play music, but not live music, they play pre-recorded music. Right. And so, and they think, wow, uh, Horse was real jerk to us, but you know what? Uh, Ohana means family, and family <laughs> means no horse gets left behind. Right. And so they call up Horse, but they don't do that because Horse is really famous, and they go through Horse's agent uh, to get to Horse. And so they get they get a hold of Horse, and they say, um, hey Horse, we feel for you. Uh, I know that we ended on bad terms, but we, we're still good, right? We're cool? Uh, I We just wanted you to know we're here for you because they're they're good people. Well, they're animals. They're good animals. They're good humanoid animals. And uh, Horse initially is like, no, I don't want you in my life, in my horse life. And then uh, horse changes mind, and horse wants them in. Uh, horse wants cow and chicken back in the life, and says, you know what, cow and chicken, maybe you're right. Maybe there's more to life than being on a horse yacht with a bunch of horse models, and maybe I should have spent some time on my art instead of being on said horse yacht. And. Uh, I'm sorry for everything I did. I was a real bad horse. And, but more importantly, I was a bad friend. Um, who also just happened to be a horse. And then, um, they say, let's patch this up. I have an idea. Um, I, uh, how about we will, will coordinate something. Uh, how about you, uh, cow and chicken, fly over to Toronto, Ontario from BC. British Columbia, to, uh, we could hang out, we can rekindle our, uh, um, creative fire together, and, um, we can, we can end up, no, wait, no, wait, but the fire, the, oh, no, oh, no. So we only got about halfway through that joke, but we'll come back and finish it later. Yeah, we'll pick that up again in a little bit. Yeah, uh, TQ uh, uh, Com says they're a little lost, so maybe we might we might have to start that over again. But don't worry, we'll finish that joke later. Yeah. <laughs> Are you enjoying that? Yeah. No, don't worry. We're definitely going to come back to it. Okay. No, no. Do we? How? Yeah. Actually, Ben, that, was, that was a joke. How close are we to the end of the joke? Oh, I could keep, well, do you want, I could close it. Do you want to <laughs> okay, how about this? How about this? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, we're supposed to be having Jacob's story time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I feel like people are going to get, like, uh, people are going to be kind of sad if they don't get to hear the end of it. Uh, so, how about this? If you want... So it, when we reach twelve thousand dollars, we will finish off that horse joke. We will tell that we will we will we will bring you the exciting conclusion of the horse joke. Right. But for now, we're going to take an intermission <laughs> <laughs> to the horse joke. And uh, when you're exercising groaning, 
Which brings us neatly back to the conclusion of Ben Wheeler's story. <laughs> <laughs> ben, oh, people donated a lot of money to hear the end of this horse joke. Yeah. But I do want to say that we do have to sh change for uh, for Night Watch at 6, so you might have to cut it a little short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. 40 minutes? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Two. <laughs> Ten, how's it going? So I thought we did this already. Oh, we, we got halfway through. I paid through. you to stop. We got, half, we got halfway through. I have more if you need it. Yeah. Oh, yes, Actually, <laughs> wait, Ben. Before mm -hmm. we go again, yeah. come with me over to our giveaway zone, the Kevin camp, because we have a bunch <laughs> of stuff to give away. Okay. Whoa. We oh. have over on Kevin cam here so many board games. That's a lot of board games. This is a lot of board games. This is... Spirit Island, Branch and Claw, and Spirit Island, which is a game I've played, which is great. Uh -huh. Brew Crafters, which is a beering game. Uh, the Island of Dr. Lucky, which I think most people have heard of. Get Lucky, Kill Dr. Lucky, an expansion for microbrewers, and Medium, a mind-reading party game, and an expansion thereof. So there's a lot of stuff, and we should, we should run this donation drive till 6, I think, because that's the end of our shift. Oh, you also get a doubloon. There's a lot of stuff. Doubloon. Yeah. Oh. What number do you think it should go for, Ben? I, yeah. Let's put Ben on the spot. Oh, God. Um. Wait, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes here. And it's 2019. It's 919. What's a reasonable number? That's a reasonable number. 789. 2019. 789 is a reasonable number. 789 a reasonable number. 919 it is. 919. Hey. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. Oh no. 919. Hey. So we're gonna do a 919 giveaway. And we'll draw either at six o'clock or the end of the horse story, whichever is later. Mm. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> It's the Greater Than Games Bundle. I would like to thank I would like to thank Greater Than Games for donating that to us. So get your donations of nine dollars and nineteen cents and multiples thereof in for a chance to win that awesome uh, collection of very good board games. Uh, so thank you very much. And now on to the horse. To clarify, there's there's not it's not just a horse. There's also a cow and a chicken. And there may be other horses uh, involved in the sto st telling of the story. Um, <laughs> where do I begin again? Uh, I, I'll give a little recap for those of you not familiar um, with what has happened so far in our story or our joke. There was a horse named Horse who was feeling sad and uh, without much to do and occupy their time. Uh, and they were found themselves turning on the television, and they turned the channel to MTV music. We can, we can maybe go back to the part where the horse is sad because he was rude to his friends. Oh, oh, sorry, okay. So the horse is rude to his friends, uh, previously involving MTV music television related things. Uh, and so horse uh, is on the phone with cow and chicken. Horse is in Toronto, Ontario. And Cow and Chick are in, are in uh, Victoria, B.C., British Columbia. And uh, they, they're kind of trying to schedule meeting up to reconcile any kind of uh, bad blood between all of them. Um, well, not between Cow and Chicken, because they were still friends. But instead, uh, several different avenues of Cow and Horse, Chicken and Horse, and then the collective of Cow and Chicken to Horse. That's where you might find bad blood involving all of these members. Although cow and chicken have had their differences over the years, but not to the same level of horse and cow, horse and chicken, or cow and chicken and horse. And so they're trying to coordinate a, uh, like a reunion tour or a reunion show or a recording of an album for a reunion. It could even be a live album for a reunion show or tour or album, but that's redundant. And so they're trying to coordinate how how this should how this should all work out. What what how they can all come together at last. And so Horse thinks, well this is a perfect time for me to go back home to Victoria BC, British Columbia, to also visit family 
because horse has horse parents that are both horse alive and they live in victoria bc british columbia because that's where horse was born and where the story started with horse living there before horse moved over to toronto ontario and so horse uh calls up mom horse and dad horse uh, well, calls the house of both of them. Horse isn't familiar with which horse parent will be on the end. And uh, it turns out that it was, in this instance, horse... I'm just going to fix No, it. yeah, please do. Talking. It turns out in this instance, it was horse mom on the end of the phone, of the horse phone. And so uh, horse says, hi, horse mom, how's it going? And horse mom goes, who's this? And then horse says, well, I, I called you. I called you and said it was mum, so who would it be? Because horse is the only child. Horse is an only child. Okay. And horse mum goes, horse, I'm just, I'm just having fun, horsing around. <laughs> sure. Um, and instead, it, so they, they talk and they uh, kind of rebond with each other, with horse mum and horse parent. Horse dad is there, but you know horse dads. And so horse says, how about I... Uh, fly over to Victoria, and I'm going to surprise my previous bandmates, cow and chicken, uh, and we're going to record something in our hometown. But before I meet with them, I want to meet with you two, my horse parents. And they said, that sounds lovely, honey. Horse. And so horse gets on an airplane, um, flying with a, a, a airline that I won't give a name for. Um, but they fly over. It's Air Canada. <laughs> and they fly, they fly over from Toronto, Ontario to Victoria, well, to Vancouver, then to Victoria. <laughs> I ended up being a bit cheaper, albeit more time. And um, Horse gets to watch a couple of um, movies or documentaries on the plane. One of them being a behind the music of Van Halen, um, the band that inspired all of them. And Horse is getting really sentimental now. If seeing Horse parents wasn't enough, watching documentaries enough and so he lands in Vancouver and uh, is uh, about to go over to Victoria and he does and so now horse is in Victoria <laughs> and horse is uh, meets up with parents and everything's fine the horse parents are fine everything's fine and dandy and then horse uh, says, kind of jokes around, says, "Hey, I bought you uh, cow and chicken. I bought you tickets, plane tickets, to go to Toronto, Ontario, to meet me. Well, first to go to Vancouver, BC, British Columbia, and then to Toronto, Ontario, to meet me. And then, but horse is at the airport to surprise cow and chicken. And then, um, so he's at the airport." and uh, gets a call on his newly acquired cell phone uh, because he got rich and now has money for a cell phone. And he, it's, it's um, Mama Horse. And Mama Horse goes, Horse, it's terrible. It's your father. It's your, your father. It's, and you gotta, please, honey, you've gotta come home. And Horse goes, oh my God, oh my God, something, something horrible has happened. And so books it from the airport and goes back to the, the horse um, home residence parental horse home residence uh, to find that the only thing that has gone wrong is that um, dad has misplaced the car keys and that's it and classic horse mum uh, and then unfortunately the television is on and this time it's not on MTV music television it's instead on a local news channel that has given some uh, horrible news that there's been an accident uh, near the airport and there's no time for details with horse, so horse books it to the airport uh, and ch is trying to see what's going on, uh, trying to find cow and chicken, frantically trying to find them uh, and not using the cell phone. As previously established, one of them had a cell phone. Can anybody remember who had the cell phone? Yes. Cow, correct. Rat also had a cell phone, but that was not announced, but that's good. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, they, they don't contact each other, and Horse is trying to figure out what's going on, and um, Horse uh, is trying to find anywhere with a TV that's playing the news, uh, and is very distraught about all this. And the only thing that Horse can think of is going to the, the airport bar. And so Horse walks into the bar, and the bartender says, why the long face?
Thank you. Thank you. It's a horse. It was a horse. It was a horse all along. <laughs> and the joke is it's a horse. Yeah. Right. And they sort of, compared to humans, of course, their faces are a little more elongated. Yeah. Okay. okay yeah. Is that an expression that means something else as well? No. Huh? No. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much, Ben Wheeler. Yeah, Wheeler.